Hello ladies and mostly gentlemen, I'm gonna be with a mustache and I need a pallet fork attachment for my little tractor. So I'm gonna build myself one, but you need one too. You just don't know it yet, cause it's a game changer. As you all know by now, to properly start a project, I always start with a plan. And this one comes from 57design.ca. You should check them out for all your needs in airbag trailer and backhoe plans. Wink wink? Uh, but don't look for this plan though, I designed it with bits and pieces laying around the shop, so it's not worthy to sell. To give you a little preview, this is what we're gonna build today. And make sure you have all your tools ready so you can follow along. Right, let's get to the build. Once again, using my trusty CNC plasma table. Uh, guys, if you're into building things, uh, this should be on top of your build list. It's a game changer. Okay, here I made a little mistake. I tried to reuse some old quarter inch plate, cause I'm poor, uh, I mean, I'm eco-aware non-binary. So I plug existing holes, but unfortunately, I ended up with two separate pieces. But luckily, I have another part that I can use as a jig. Right, apparently I can trust my trusty CNC plasma table because when I tried to cut more parts, the plasma was not properly working and after a while of looking for answers, it seems that the cap is cracked. Maybe it's hard to see on camera. So today you're gonna tackle your build list and start building your own CNC table. Remember to mount the plasma gun on a detachable head with a sensor to shut down the machine in case of a crash. Otherwise the gun cap will take a beating and it may crack just like mine. After I change the cap, I resume parts production. Being poor, I mean being a father of two future university students, I try to reuse material that I have on hand. The downside is definitely the prep time, which can be translated to countless hours of grinding. Well, lucky for you, I did count these countless hours and I made a graph of all the important things I spent time on for the past 20 years. And clearly, I spent way too much time on grinding. Some may argue that 20 years is about 175,000 hours, meaning that to have that many hours on grinding, I will have needed to grind in my sleep. But let's not get bothered by details, shall we? After that, I marked the positions for the notches Oh yes, for the non-forklift user, standard forks have a spring-loaded locator. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the forks and I'll show you. <sighs> so this is the locator that will slide into a notch to keep the fork in place. Oh, and by the way, if you want to make your own pallet fork attachment, I highly recommend buying a no set from Craigslist or Marketplace. Don't even bother making your own set because these are heat treated and they will flex under a heavy load when regular steel will bend. I paid mine 200 Canadian pesos, which is probably equivalent to 20 US dollar and a shotgun. Before moving too fast, I did a test to see how the lock fits with the notches. Perfect. Knowing that everything fits, I made a gouge between the angle iron and the flat bar to fully weld the two together. I cleaned a bit the weld since this is the face that the forks will ride on and I wanted it to be baby butt smooth-ish. With the two angle irons done, it was time to put everything together. Once again, checking the fit. 
Right, and the best I build way smoother sliding mechanism than this one, but I think it's gonna be just fine uh, until it's not. Tip number 435 when designing parts that will be laser or plasma cut, add locating notches. It's a game changer. Okay, this section I'm currently building is the one that will slide on my SSQA, which I made a video of a few weeks ago. You should check it out. Now time to see how it fits. Oh, another Vinny's classic of I forgot to press the record button. And it fits. Oh yeah, first try. Okay, well, it almost fits. But as I always say to my co-workers when testing a new robot cell, we're always only one grinder away from success. Time to finish the bottom part. You see this hole? Yeah, this is where the locking pin from the SSQA will lock in. Uh, by the way, have you seen my SSQA video I made a few months ago? You should check it out. <laughs> Works. <laughs> hmm, that side will need some fine tuning. <laughs> yeah, I'm not faking it. These are really heavy. But how heavy are they? My wife wondered who scratched the scale. A hundred twenty-three pounds? Told you, that's a good chunk of metal. For those who are still following and building their own pallet fork attachment, gentlemen, start your welders. Okay, we're gonna take a short break from the pallet fork attachment build, otherwise this video will only be 5 minutes long. So yeah guys, take 5 while I'm fixing my muffler, cause it's pretty loud. And the camera's mic is not picking how loud the muffler is, so I'll put my fingers in my ears to illustrate how loud it really is. See? Since all the spare parts are discontinued for my Massey Ferguson 210 tractor, even the mufflers, so I'm using a cherry bomb muffler to build myself a new exhaust. Okay, sometimes you need to transition from a small to a bigger pipe, and all you need to do so is a long, rounded and hard piece of steel. And yeah, also an hammer. And voila! Okay, using a larger and longer muffler, I think I made it even louder. Maybe not louder, but you know, with a deeper sound to it. What a fail! Oh, but... I do have a more restrictive muffler that I plan on using for my smart boozer in case where a racetrack had a disable limit. Race season is over, so let's use it. I broke a stud while unbolting the muffler. <laughs> Ah, fuck you. And this is a metric fine shred. This is as rare in my shop as my kids freely volunteering to do the dishes. But I dismantled a few motorcycles in the past. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh, and 
see how much quieter it is now. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, here is Vinny from the future. And I worked a few hours with this exhaust setup and it's shit. Since it's difficult to film exhaust fumes, here's a reenactment of what's happening. Come on, see, Bachelet, nous. Je vais me deux cent trois. If you're wondering why I didn't go right away for the upwards version, like it used to be, it's because I tried to modernize a bit my tractor. New subcompact tractors have the exhaust under the machine and pointing downwards. We therefore no longer see mufflers sticking out the hood. I tried to copy that way of doing things, but because of the loader, I wasn't able to put the muffler low enough, and while driving, all the smoke went directly into my face. Okay, we're back on the pallet fork attachment, and the last part we have to build is the guard. Sometimes it pays more to be lucky than good. Right on it! <laughs> 44 inches? Damn! I wasn't sure if I really needed that extra guarding, but I'm glad I had it. Yes, it's safer with it, but also super useful to attach and secure the payload to it with a ratchet strap. And it doesn't fit. But what did I told you? We're only a grinder away from success. A bit of grease to help the sliding motion? You'll see, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. I mean, it sh should slide easily? Oh, I know, I should bring the forks up. And I, yeah, at any moment now? Oh, eyesight move, that counts, right? That was easy. First try. I said it at the beginning, but the forks are a game changer because now I can think in pallet mode. And I mean by that that I can put a lot of loose stuff on a pallet and now easily move it around. I'm talking about carport plugs and pipes, firewood, steel plates and much more. But now I'm only missing two little things. The first one is power. I need more hydraulic pressure to be able to pick up heavier things. And the first thing I need to do is figure out which relief valve is releasing the oil pressure at only 1500 PSI. And it's harder than it looks, cause at the moment I have 5 relief valves. 4 from 4 different spools and 1 from the tractor. And I think it's the one from the tractor that is causing the problem, but I just don't know where it is. Uh huh, that could be it. Seriously Vinny? Not again with the record button. Huh, the joy of making YouTube videos. Everything takes just a little bit more time. And ladies and mostly gentlemen, this is my tractor relief valve. Relief valve, this is ladies and mostly gentlemen. You might be able to see it, but a groove started forming where the point is sitting. Maybe it's the cause of that low pressure. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. To give a bit more resistance from the spring, which I think might also be the cause of the low pressure. You know, it's as old as me, so one or two washers shall do the trick. And there it is, 2000 PSI. I know it's not much, cause the newer tractors are running at higher PSI, but I'll give a chance to that old hydraulic pump. I also check all four spool valves to make sure they were all set at 2000 PSI and not less. The second little thing I need to have is a visual gauge, something to tell me if the forks are level to pick up a pallet. And I'm gonna make that gauge from that bent ATV tie rod.
Then I took it outside to mark, at full extension, where to cut the rod. Oops, apparently I need to bend it back. Perfect! Then I cut the extra length of rod, leveled the forks and had a visual marker. If you're still with me as far in this video, you either love my teenager dick jokes or you're passionate about forks, well if you said yes to option B, you should go check the channel of my good buddy Austin Colson. He restored an old forklift and he did a fantastic work especially on the paint job. Man that first scratch gonna hurt. Some may argue that his video has crossed the half million views and doesn't need a push from a 5000 views video but let's not get bothered by details shall we? Now that I have the pallet fork attachment, this opens up the storage options and so I embark on a big cleanup of my backyard. I picked up second hand racking for a good price, I just needed to cut them to the right height. and make sure they were somewhat level. And now with this racking I can store some of my older projects, like my vacuum farming machine. Boy do I hate this thing. I can also store material for future projects and even my mower. Yeah, it's the first time you're gonna hear it, but it's a game changer. Hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss my next project. Here's a hint on what I'm currently working on.